So hello everyone, I'm Saad Khan and I was sophomore of the Department of Mechanical Engineering in IIT Bombay. So today we'll be learning about Laplace transforms, uh, which are taught as part of the differential equations course uh, at IIT Bombay and this course is covered in the second semester. So one might wonder why Laplace transforms, right? Why do we need a, La a Laplace transform? So most of the uh, engineering systems that we deal with are modeled by differential equations. And the, these differential equations sometimes became insanely hard to solve. So we switch to solving, the, uh, we switch to actually simplifying these equations into a form that is way easier for us to solve. So to actually transform this difficult looking differential equation into a very simpler form, we need a transformation which is called the Laplace transformation. Some industry applications can include in the control theory where uh, we take the input signal and uh, to, into any system. And we just need to know the impulse response of the system. And we can just take these two signals, Laplace transform them, multiply them, and then inverse Laplace transform them to get the general output of that system. So this may be sort of complicated right now, but after understanding how Laplace transform works, it will be really easy to understand. So the Laplace transform is defined this way, that if you have an input signal, uh, input signal varying with time t, then if you multiply it with e to the minus st and integrate the, integrate the result, you will get a function of s. That is no wonder if you apply the limits. That function of s is called the Laplace transform of, this is called the Laplace transform of, of t. All right. Now, Laplace transform has two important variations. One will be the unilateral Laplace transform and one will be the bilateral uh, Laplace transform. The only difference being the domains of integration. In unilateral transformation, we integrate from 0 to infinity. And in bilateral, we uh, integrate from minus infinity to infinity. All right. So in physics, we consider T as time. So of course, this will be what we majorly use in physics, All right. Uh, where time is greater than 0. So we consider the unilateral transform. But mathematics majorly deals with the bilateral transforms. All right. So mathematics basically deals with the bilateral transforms. Now. Uh, you may note that if you have ever uh, seen the form of a Fourier transform, you would see that there's uh, the Laplace transform and the Fourier transform equations are surprisingly similar, right? They both take a function of time as an input and they both multiply this input with some exponential term. The only difference being the coefficient, the, the power to which the exponential term is raised to. Over here it is s and over here it is minus iota omega, all right? So the difference is that S is defined as sigma plus iota omega, as you can see over here. That's how S is defined with sigma and omega both being real numbers, which makes S a complex number, all right? So S may be purely real, purely imaginary, or it may be a complex number in the, uh, in the uh, you know, iota real and imaginary axis in the plane somewhere else with having sigma and uh, omega both as non-zero, all right. So note that if I plug in sigma equal to zero over here and I put it back over here, we get the Fourier transform. But to understand it even more intuitively, we'll take this in the second part of this uh, uh, Laplace transform. So now let's look at why we need the Laplace transform if we have the Fourier transform, right? We have another transform. Why would someone even come up with another one? So let's see that why. <coughs> So most of the engineering signals, the signals that we deal with in, in, in engineering systems are composed of both oscillatory as well as exponential component. They may oscillate and they may grow or decay over time because not everything is perfect, right? So the oscillatory part is indeed captured by the Fourier transform because as you can see, e to the minus iota omega, all right, e to the minus iota omega, I can expand e to the minus iota omega t as sine of minus omega t plus iota cos of minus iota omega t. So you can look at this. This is a purely purely sinusoidal component, right? So you're sort of multiplying a term with a sine and a cos term and trying to integrate it over the whole domain. So you're sort of trying to figure out what are the frequencies that make up the signal f of t, right? So that's what Fourier transform captures. That's precisely what Fourier transform captures is the frequency that are used to make up the signal f of t. And it does not care about if the signal is decaying or it's growing. It doesn't really give uh, like any thought to that, all right? 
So that's what makes Laplace transform different from Fourier transform because Fourier transform only considers the oscillatory input, whereas the Laplace transform considers the exponential term inside that component as well. What do I mean by that? Since my Fourier transform gets multiplied by the signal gets multiplied by e to the minus iota omega t in Fourier transform, whereas in Laplace transform it gets multiplied with e to the minus s plus sorry sigma plus iota omega t, which is nothing but e to the minus sigma e to the minus iota omega t dt. This is in Laplace transform. All right. So Laplace transform considers the Fourier transform oscillatory part as well as considers this additional exponent term. So this allows us to analyze whether the signal is decaying or growing over time, right? So I think this is enough of an intuition of what Laplace transform is. We'll cover more of intuition in the next part, but right now just let's just see how to apply this equation and compute the Laplace transform of some basic signals, all right? So let's consider that my function of time is just one or at a constant, or let's generalize it by taking a, all right? Then we have that the Laplace transform of f of t is just from minus infinity to infinity e to the minus uh, f of t is just a e to the minus s t dt. Now a being a constant I can pull it out and I can add e to the minus s t over here. So let us just consider the unilateral transform for now. Alright, so the Laplace transform of f of t becomes. Uh, a times the integration of this is just e to the minus s t over minus s. The limits are from 0 to infinity. Uh, the, note that the integration is with respect to t, all right. So, do not integrate with respect to s. So, that just becomes a times when you plug in infinity, it becomes 0. When you plug in 0, it becomes 1. So, that just becomes a by s. So, we see that the Laplace transform of f of t which is equal to the Laplace transform of some constant a is just a by s all right. So we will be understanding why some or why, why what this actually means intuitively but uh, that will be in the upcoming lectures. For now let us look at another example. For example taking the Laplace transform of e to the minus a t right or just say a to the power a t. So this will be integration from 0 to infinity e to the at e to the minus st dt. So that will be 0 to infinity e to the a minus s t dt and if we integrate that we get e to the a minus s times t the whole thing over a minus s and the domain is 0 to infinity. All right. So this just becomes uh, what if you plug in infinity over here. Huh. So, this is an interesting case. So, think about it. If you plug in infinity over here, what will happen? We will have two cases, right? First case will be if a is greater than s, right? If a is greater than s and we plug in infinity over here, we will be having some positive quantity times infinity, which would mean that the Laplace transform would go to infinity, right? And that is not something that we want. So, we want to be restricted to some uh, like finite value of Laplace transform. So the condition of computing the Laplace transform here becomes that s should be greater than a. All right. So we'll see that this is actually called the reason of convergence, but we'll see why. So we can uh, consider that s is greater than a. If that is the case, then this term, this term will be negative, right? And we'll have some negative quantity times infinity, and that will go to zero. And that is something that we want. This is something really good. So I can write that plug in infinity over here. We get 0 minus plugging 0 over here will get 1, 1 over a minus s. So this becomes 1 over s minus a. So all in all saying that Laplace transform of e to the at becomes 1 over s minus a. So you can actually try out different signals and just uh, solve for the solve the integral and then find out whether you are right or not or just google the solutions and see what the actual signal output becomes or the transform becomes. And this is a really good practice if you want to solve it by uh, actually performing the integration. Uh, for further signals, like it is really good if you and, uh, just learn by heart the uh, some standard signals that you just need to remember. So you don't have to actually derive it every time. 
uh, learn the, some standard signals like the constant and the exponential and the sinus order and the co cosine, things like that. That will really help you in computing uh, the Laplace transform of more complex signals later on. So that's it from my side. I'm Saad Khan uh, from my mechanical engineering department at IIT Bombay. Uh, thanks a lot and this is 9 pointer.